Dear friends, our next presentation is a book on uh, the Bookbird uh, magazine. It's a publication that covers the issues uh, of uh, international children's literature. And, uh, and this is the IB, uh, IBBY organ of publication. It's a publication. First, uh, and that will be... Uh, a video, a video address. It will be uh, by um, John Laser from uh, United States, Rhode Island University. Uh, this woman was uh, uh, president of the Bookbird magazine for over 20 years. And she was even awarded Ella Lepman Award in 2010. And then uh, we will have a presentation uh, by Valery Kochlan, uh, who is the current uh, president of Bookbird, who worked uh, for many years as a co-editor and librarian. At the moment, she is a researcher uh, of children's literature, and she is uh, uh, focused on uh, Irish uh, literature because she's from Isler. And the co-presenter is Evelyn Freeman from the United States. She is an honored professor of the University of Ohio. And she's also co-author of uh, Book Bird, and she is the author of uh, four books on children's literature. She is an active uh, member of the uh, U.S. section of IBM. And she is the president of the U.S. section. My name is Joan Glaze. My name is Joan Glazer, and I'm delighted and honored to be able to present to you a new book, Bookbird, A Flight Through Time, edited by Valerie Coughlin and Evelyn Freeman, and published by Bookbird Incorporated. Bookbird is the journal of the International Board on Books for Young People, and this book traces its inception, growth, and success. It also shows the beginnings, growth, and interrelationships of the International Youth Library in Munich, the Hans Christian Andersen Awards, IBI, and Bookbird all owe their founding to one remarkable woman, Yella Lepman. She was born into a Jewish family in Stuttgart, educated in Germany and Switzerland, and moved to England in 1936 to escape the rise of Nazism. At the end of World War II, she returned to Germany, where she saw the plight of the children there, saw books as essential as food and shelter, and began requesting publishers to send books for an exhibition. This led to her establishing, with funds from the Rockefeller Foundation, the International Youth Library. Then in 1953, a group she organized founded the International Board on Books for Young People and the Anderson Award. And in 1957, Bookbird began, first as a quarterly bulletin. Bookbird, a journal of international children's literature, has been in publication now for over 60 years. So a flight through time really is a flight through time. It managed to stay aloft through some bumpy air. During this period, its publication location changed several times, and not always without controversy. And of course, finances are always a fun topic for any journal. What one sees, however, is the dedication to an informative and quality journal by all who were associated with it. Chapters in the book, which is organized chronologically, are written by past and present editors of Bookbird, by members of the board that oversees the publication of the journal, and by individuals who have been instrumental in developing and supporting Bookbird. There are interviews by the editors and an extremely useful overview also by the editors for each of the five major sections of the book. 
Poetry is included as are many, many photographs. One could put a face to the people who have been so essential to Bookbird's success. See gatherings of both adults and children as they celebrate reading and books and experience the wide range of countries and venues where Ibby and Bookbird representatives have been active. And if you've been a part of this, take a trip down memory lane. You will now have the opportunity to hear from the two magnificent editors. Valerie Coughlin is the current president of the Bookbird Inc. Board and from 2005 to 2009 co-edited Bookbird. She helped found and served as president chair of Ibby Ireland, of the Children's Literature Association of Ireland, and of Children's Books Ireland. Her day job was as a librarian in a teacher education college in Dublin. Evelyn Freeman is currently the president of the United States Board on Books for Young People, served on the IBI Executive Committee, and was a co-editor of Bookbird from 2001 to 2004. She is the co-author of four books on topics related to children's literature. She served as president of the Children's Literature Assembly of the National Council of Teachers of English. Her day job was as a professor and then dean and director of the Ohio State University Mansfield in the United States. In addition to how incredibly competent these two women are, Valerie and Evie have maintained their sanity and even their sense of humor while producing an exciting book during the COVID pandemic. My name is John. Sorry, just a moment. Uh, we are very sorry, we are going to switch on, uh, so Valerie will be the first one to speak, Valerie and Evelyn, both of them will speak, I guess that this is the end of the video, it was the end, quite surprising and abrupt. Hello, 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 Evie, hello, Valerie. We, 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 hello. We, yes, we see you. We see you. Hello. Hello. Hi, hello. Good morning. Here from the U.S. So you and Evie is actually the first speaker. Uh, I follow her. Okay. Okay. Happy. Okay. Should I begin? Yes, please. Wonderful. Good morning from the United States. Bookbird, A Flight Through Time, began its journey on a wintry day in Chicago, Illinois, USA. In December 2016, at the home of Junko Yakota and our dear friend Bill Teal, where the Bookbird Inc. board was meeting for an intense three-day retreat to review policies and procedures. Junko was then secretary of Bookbird Inc., Valerie was president, and I was representing the IBI Executive Committee. We were also joined by Ellis Vance, treasurer of the board. We have such wonderful memories of that time, which we will always remember. Bill cooked us delicious meals and was the perfect host. As we reviewed historic book book documents, we found a copy of the book, Mrs. Letman, edited by Leoba Betton, with an English translation by Patricia Crampton, published in 1992, that Junko had. Most of us had never seen this book, and we felt the joy that archaeologists must feel when they unearth a treasured relic. As we looked through the book, we realized that we had missed Bookbird's 50th year anniversary, which would have been in 2007 and that 2017 would be Bookbird's 60th anniversary. 
all of us agree that we did not want this 60th anniversary to pass without recognition. So we contacted Bjorn Sunmark, the editor of Bookbird at that time. Bjorn enthusiastically embraced the idea and decided to devote a section of a Bookbird issue to the 60th anniversary. Bjorn contacted previous editors and even interviewed former editor Lucia Binder in person in Vienna. The result was 25 wonderful pages of reflections by former Bookbird editors, an article about the beginnings of the journal at the International Youth Library, and a biographical sketch of Yella Lepman. This tribute appeared in Bookbird, Volume 55, Number 4, in 2017, and was well received by our readership. Several people encouraged us to expand this material into a longer standalone, standalone piece. At the Bookbird Inc. board meeting in Bologna at the Book Fair in spring of 2018, we discussed this idea of expanding the section that appeared in the Bookbird issue into a full-length book about Bookbird's history and how it intersected with the history of IBI and the International Youth Library. The board was very enthusiastic about this idea and asked Valerie and I to serve as co-editors. Thus began our flight through time of researching, interviewing, and learning about the inspiring and very interesting history of Bookbird. Following the board meeting, Valerie and I met further while in Bologna to draft a tentative table of contents, conceptual framework for the book, and a timeline. We wanted the book to be visually attractive and to include photos and images throughout Bookbird's 60 years. Our goal was to launch the book at the IBI Congress in Moscow in September 2020. We divided up responsibilities and eagerly began contacting authors of articles and individuals whom we wanted to interview. Valerie arranged for a designer in Dublin with whom she had previously worked to be our designer and secured the services of a highly recommended copy editor, also living in Dublin. We found time to work together at the IBI Congress in Athens in September of 2018, received feedback about our plans for the book for the Bookbird Inc. board, and decided to travel to the International Youth Library in Munich and the IBI Secretariat in Basel to conduct research into Bookbird's history. We knew that we would have time to work together again in Bologna in March 2019, and so we arranged for the research trip to occur in May of 2019. The research trip was very informative and enjoyable. We learned a great deal and realized that Bookbird had quite an intriguing, challenging, and at times turbulent history. In addition to archival information, we also selected many images to use so that the book would truly be a photo history. We were excited about the book's possibility and comfortable with our timeline of the September 2020 launch in Moscow. Valerie planned to return to Basel to find more photos, and I planned a trip to Dublin in May of 2020 so we could work together with the designer. Valerie and I met again in person at the IBI Regional Conference in October of 2019 hosted by USBBY in Austin, Texas, and felt we were making appropriate progress with the book. But who could have imagined a global pandemic? As you know, in March of 2020, the world shut down. The in-person Bologna Book Fair was canceled, and shortly after it was decided to postpone the IBI Congress in Moscow until September of 2021. As the saying goes, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. Valerie and I were determined to do this book and so found a way to work during the pandemic. With the use of technology, Zoom and FaceTime, we could meet with each other, with the book contributors and with our designer. 
I was the liaison with our copy editor, and we figured out an efficient and productive way to work virtually. With the incredible assistance from the staff at the International Youth Library and Liz Page at the IPI Secretariat, we were able to secure the additional photos that we desired. We hope to document through photos all the activities and the people who were important in the history of Bookbird, but these images were not always available. The book is organized chronologically into five sections, each introduced by an overview and photo montage. It includes 22 articles from contributors who live in seven different countries. Each section also includes a poem by a Hans Christian Andersen recipient in English and the poem's original language. The book's foreword is written by Hans Christian Andersen recipient Catherine Patterson and IBI president Ning Xiao Zhang has shared a welcome message. We are deeply grateful to Hans Christian Andersen recipient Igor Olenekov, who generously shared many possible cover options with us. The book's cover magnificently conveys Bookbird's flight. That brings us to today, and the world is still in the throes of the pandemic. We appreciate this opportunity to share the book with you, either in person or virtually at the IBI Congress here in Moscow. Well, Evie has explained the genesis of Bookbird, a flight through time, and the structure of the book, beginning with the very early days of Bookbird up to the present day. Mostly the story of Bookbird is told through the voices of those actively engaged with the journal, past editors, officers of the Bookbird Inc. board, executive directors of IBI, and the directors of the in director of the International Youth Library in Munich which in its early days played a very large part in the establishment of Bookbird. As many of you will know, the story of Bookbird begins with one remarkable woman. When Yella Lepman's, while Yella Lepman's name is familiar, nowadays she's often seen as a shadowy figure and an understanding of her motivation and achievements has become somewhat blurred. So Yella Lepman's return to a war ravaged Germany seemed a very good place to start Bookbird a flight through time. Yella Lepman grew up in a prosperous Jewish family in Stuttgart. Seeing what was happening as National Socialism or Nazism gained strength in the years between the two world wars, Lepman, who was by now widowed, left Germany with her children for London in 1936. In London, she worked at her former profession as a journalist, and subsequently, she joined the staff of the United States Embassy. Following the end of the war, she was asked to return to Germany to take up a post in the United States zone, acting as an advisor on the cultural and educational needs of women and children. At first, Lepman resisted. But as she became more aware of the situation of children in war-ravaged Germany, she agreed. In Germany, much of the aid focus was on food, shelter and clothing, but Yella Lepman thought that more was required, something other than these immediate needs, needs, and this should be books. In her autobiography, uh, Die Kinderbuchbrüche, A Bridge of Children's Books, Lepman tells how she believed that books of high quality would be a means of bringing to colour and beauty to the lives of children who had never experienced anything like this. She also hoped that by reading about children in other countries, greater understanding of others would be reached. And this might prevent further conflicts, such as the one from which the world had just emerged. Appealing to a number of countries, she amassed a large collection of children's books. These she formed into an exhibition, which was open to children and adults, and where children could actually touch and read the books. It also included paintings by children, another means of bringing colour and beauty, and of course, creativity into their lives. Initially, the ex exhibition was held in Munich, in a building which had been a Nazi stronghold. Later books were exhibited in other German cities, including Frankfurt, Stuttgart and Berlin. These exhibitions were enormously successful and attracted huge audiences. Perhaps it's hard to imagine that today, 
But during the Nazi times, and indeed in other periods of repression throughout the world, books were banned and often burned, as we have been reminded so movingly by Zora and other speakers this weekend. So the reaction of both children and adults to seeing so many books, and especially colourful, attractive books on display, was amazement and delight, just as Yella Lepman had hoped. As the collection grew, the books required a permanent home. This led to the, in, the establishment of the International Jugendbibliothek, or the International Youth Library. Here we see, on the left, uh, the original home of the library, in a mansion on Kulbachstrasse in Munich. And on the other side, visitors enjoy a garden party in the library grounds. Then, to promote the importance of children's books, Lettman and others got together to found Dibby. And as another means of promoting quality in writing, illustration and publishing, the Hans Christian Andersen Awards were established. Lettman had supposed that support from the Rockefeller Foundation, the American Library Association, UNESCO and IBI. In 1957, she was invited to initiate a special programme to promote children's reading and libraries in countries in the Middle East, Asia, South America and Africa. So a bulletin was necessary to spread information about what was happening in these regions and to facilitate the international exchange of information about children's books. This was initially called Wings, which was yet Lettman's tribute to French essayist and thinker Paul Azard's quotation, which was well loved by Lettman. Give us books, say the children, give us wings. However, she later decided that instead the new bulletin should be called Bookbird. This was first published by the International Youth Library in November 1957 and was financed by the Rockefeller Foundation. While Lettman was thinking about this bullet, bulletin, Richard Bamberger in Vienna was also involved in publishing a journal devoted to children's books. Bamberger had been closely involved with the foundation of IBI and this journal was to reflect IBI's ethos and activities. However, after some discussion, it was agreed that the two publications would merge under the name of Bookbird, with Jella Lettman, Richard Bamberger and Fritz Brunner listed as editors. The story of Richard Bamberger's involvement with Jella Lettman, Ibi and Bookbird is recounted in Bookbird A Flight Through Time by the later Peter Schneck, a former president of Ibi, who knew Bamberger very well. Even though the early issues of Bookbird were described as a bulletin and were only 12 pages in length, Lettman, and as in her other ventures, was convinced that only a production of the highest quality would match the aims of this publication. She engaged Professor Karl Hans Walter, a director of graphic design at the Academy of Fine Arts in Nuremberg, to oversee the design of the first book birds. And the book bird logo, the little bird you see, was contributed by Gerhard Marx, a member of the Bauhaus movement. The second issue of Book Bird carried an image from one of Ludwig Bellman's Madeleine books, beautifully laid out on the front flap. And here you see the girls uh, going for a walk with their dog. And the bulletin was equally ambitious in its content. News on international programmes, on reading promotion, feature, featuring IBI activities were included, and lists and reviews of award-winning books were carried. Christiana Raba, director of the International Youth Library, in her article about the beginnings of Bookbird says, I quote, it, that is Bookbird, was designed to be a bulletin for the whole international community of children's literature. And of course, Bookbird remains that today. However, after the publication of issue five of Bookbird in 1959, funding from the Rockefeller Foundation came to an end and the publication of Bookbird was suspended until 1963. Our story continues. In 1963, when Bookbird again took flight under the editorship of Richard Bamberger. Yella Lettman joined him as co-editor in 1965, the same year Bamberger founded the International Institute for Children's Literature and Reading Research in Vienna, where the journal offices would be housed. The journal has been in continuous publication since 1963. 
All the editors of Bookbird, since Yella Lepman and Richard Bamberger, are still alive today. What a joy it was to work with the previous editors and others involved with the journal. As we mentioned earlier, in 2017, Bookbird, volume 55, number four, featured a special section on 60 years of Bookbird with reflections by previous living editors at that time. We contacted each of them to receive permission to reprint their article in the book and to see if they wanted to make any changes to what they had already written. We also asked Bjorn Sunmark, the editor of the 2017 issue, and Janelle Mathis and Petros Panau, current editors, if they wanted to write something for the book. Everyone enthusiastically replied, some preferring to keep their article in, a, in its original form and others choosing to make changes. Each editor has left their indelible impression on the journal, and we learned so much from their reflections about their editorship. Lucia Binder, who worked with Richard Bamberger on the journal as managing editor for many years, became Bookbird's co-editor in 1979 and then succeeded him as editor. In her article, she describes how Bookbird spread its wings and expanded in size to 64 pages. In 1993, Bookbird crossed the pond, flying from Austria to the United States under the editorship of Jeffrey Garrett, who had worked closely with Lucia Binder. It was Jeff who established Bookbird Inc. as a legal nonprofit entity to oversee the management of Bookbird, the organization that continues today. Jeff also changed the name of the journal to Bookbird, colon, World of Children's Books. Mina Corina followed Jeff as editor and established Bookbird as a referee journal so that all major articles were reviewed by at least two experts in the field. This resulted in increased manuscript submission from children's literature scholars around the globe. Mina further changed the subtitle to Bookbird, a journal of international children's literature, its current name. As we moved into the 21st century, Bookbird had its first team of international editors, Evelyn Freeman, Barbara Lehman, Patricia Scher from the US and Lilia Racheva Stradieva from Bulgaria who was living at the time in Vienna. Lilia is multilingual and was able to translate many submitted articles into English. The team also was aided by the increased use of email to conduct Bookbird business efficiently. Bookbird then flew back across the pond to Ireland and the editorship of Valerie Coughlin and Siobhan Parkinson, who added a whimsical contents page divided into fits Lewis Carroll's term for sections in his narrative poem, The Hunting of the Snark. And they also introduced postcards as the unique format for the children's book reviews that we still use today. Bookbird has perched itself in several countries over the past decade. Valerie and Siobhan were followed by Sylvia Vardell and Kathy Kirkjian from the U.S., whose editorship included a poem by an international poet in each issue. Roxanne Hart of Canada maintained the journal's high quality standards and initiated a children and their books feature. Bjorn Sundmark from Sweden elevated the status of the journal by securing its inclusion in the prestigious Scopus database and citation index. Since they had only begun their editorships when we started the book project, current editors Janelle Mathis of the US and Petrus Panau of Cyprus, now living in the US, conducted a fascinating analysis of the themes and topics represented in Bookbird since 2009. They found that articles from around the globe covered a wide swath from the history of children's literature to emotional challenges of youth to socio-political issues, to name but a few. Bookbird has been fortunate to have many luminaries in children's literature involved with the journal. Dorothy Briley was editor-in-chief and publisher of Clarion Books 
for children when she was president of Bookbird Inc. In a tribute to her, we learn of her courage when she chose to publish Hiroshima no Kika in 1982, quote, when no other publisher would touch it, unquote. Originally published in Japan, this picture book for older readers graphically depicts the dropping of the atomic bomb and its aftermath. Sometimes throughout its history, our bird's wings dipped and faltered. Financial issues often plagued the journal. Concerns were raised about the journal moving to the US or that it would become too academic a publication. More recently, Bookbird has navigated online databases, advances in technology and social media. The covers of Bookbird contribute to its story. Junko Yakota, current president of the Hans Christian Andersen jury, discusses how the content and design of Bookbird covers have evolved over the decades and played a variety of roles. Her fascinating and heavily illustrated article feature book covers from the past 70 years. Did you know that the logo with a bird depicted as the dot above the eye first appeared in 1993? Sylvia Bardell, current Bookbird Inc. board and IBI executive committee member, suggested that we consider including poetry in the book. We had wanted to highlight recipients of the Hans Christian Andersen Award, so embrace this idea to feature poems by Hans Christian Andersen recipients. Sylvia identified Hans Christian Andersen winners who had published children's poems. They included Eleanor Fargian from the United Kingdom, James Cruss from Germany, Cecil Botker from Denmark, Annie M. G. Schmidt from the Netherlands, and Michio Mato from Japan. English translations were available for the Bodker, Schmidt, and Motto poem, and we decided to include the poem in both its original language and English. We are deeply grateful to honorary IBI member Cheiko Samori from Japan, who arranged for us to reprint the Motto poem in Japanese with its English translation by then Empress Michiko of Japan and with the original artwork by Hans Christian Andersen recipient, Mitsumatsu Anno. We also thought it appropriate to include a poem by Hans Christian Andersen himself and chose Just Living to appear in this book, our tribute to Ibi and its journal. Just living is not enough, said the butterfly. One must have sunshine, freedom, and a little flower. Few people who knew and worked with Yella Leftman are alive today and were fortunate to carry an interview with Anne Pulowski from the USA who talks about her time as a Fulbright Fellow at the International Youth Library from 1955 to 1956 when Yella Leftman was very much in charge there. Anne found Yella Leftman very easy to work with though, uh, quote, despite her reputation uh, and quote, slightly abrasive and didn't suffer fools lightly. And here you can see uh, Anne on the right hand side and Lena on the left. However, Anne also recalls a more sociable side to Yella Lettman, perhaps when away from the rigours of her work on so many different fronts, the library, IBI and other projects, Lettman was more relaxed. Anne recounts that though she had a reputation as an excellent cook, Lettman didn't like cooking for herself and sometimes prevailed on Frau Beck the wife of the doorkeeper and chauffeur at the library to invite her for an evening meal. And failing that, Anne was sometimes enlisted to cook for her. Lena Meissen, firm, former executive director of Ibi, also knew Yella Lettman. Her father, who was then president of Ibi, hoped that Lena would assist him in his work as Ibi president. But first, of course, she had to be vetted by Yella Lettman. In her, in her interview for Bookbird, A Flight Through Time, Lena remembers that following an invitation to Lettman's apartment, she, quote, returned home somewhat scared from that afternoon tea, unquote. She found Lettman to be a woman of extraordinarily commanding presence, who was, quote, almost witch-like with long fingers which seemed to draw people in to do to her bidding for Ibi and its associate organisations, unquote. 
Lettman was most certainly influential in enlisting some of the most influential people uh, in children's literature of that time, as we can see in the many photos and collages throughout the book. As Ibi grew, so did, too, did the amount of work and an office, a secretariat, was needed. Eventually, the growing organisation settled where it is today, in the Nonnebeg area in Basel in Switzerland. But of course, Ibi was not confined to an office, or indeed to any one country. The number of sections grew, and so did the meetings and congresses overseas. Following the formation of the Czechoslovakia Ibi section, the Biennale of Illustrations Bratislava, or BIB, was established, and both organisations were together, with meetings held in Bratislava, which is now in Slovakia, and BIB was helpful in advising Bookbird on matters to do with design and illustration. Lena also remembers that cont controversies arose, especially as Ibi grew and more countries uh, sought membership. In 1968, at a time of international tension arising from the Cold War, doubts were expressed by some Ibi sections about the wisdom of admitting the Soviet Union to membership. There were fears that this would politicise the work of Ibi. Following the eventual admittance of the Soviet Union, a similar situation arose a few years later when the author and Ibi Russia president, Sergei Mikhailkov, was proposed for the Ibi Executive Committee. Despite these reservations, Mikhailkov joined the Executive Committee and in spring 1973, an Ibi EC meeting was held in Moscow. Lena recalls that she was definitely not recruited as a spy, as some feared she might be, and instead, the warm Russian welcome received by EC members reassured everyone and led to lifelong friendships between Russian colleagues and those from other sections. Liz Page, known to many here, succeeded Lena in 2009 and now occupies the executive director's seat at Nun in Nonnebeg. And she is also interviewed in Bookbird of Flight Through Time. During her 11 years in office, Ibi has grown considerably, as has Bookbird in its range of articles and features. Liz writes Focus Ibi, a regular feature in Bookbird, giving news of Ibi awards and projects throughout the world, especially in many areas of international crisis. During her tenure, Ibi has increased its partnership with many other organisations. Some of these involve sponsorship. NAMI Island sponsors the Hans Christian Andersen Awards and, like the very best of sponsors, takes a warm interest in IBI and is supportive in many ways. Other awards where organisations work with and support IBI include the IBI Asahi Reading Promotion Award and the IBI I Read Outstanding Reader Reading Promotion Award. Likewise, IBI, the Yamada Project, sponsored by the Yamada Bee Farm, work in areas where books and reading promotion are very badly needed. Some of the projects feature in a photo montage of Ibi activities and projects from around the world. Our difficulty here was selecting images to re represent the vast array of projects, but in the end, anyway, it came down to whatever was available. Uh, and these just give you some idea of uh, the many countries and the many forms that Ibi support can take. Bookbird, A Flight Through Time, concludes with this, reminding us that the work began by Ella Lepman is e needed even more today, as wars, disasters, climate change and many other crises Im impact the lives of children in this world. And Bookbird continues to focus with articles about children's literature uh, from all parts of the world. Our editors, Petrus Panau and Janelle Mathis, advertise calls for articles on the Bookbird section of Ibi's website and we'll be very pleased if you respond. Uh, their articles are uh, peer-reviewed, uh, longer articles and also shorter articles uh, featuring very often uh, Ibi activities or interviews with writers, illustrators, publishers and general children's book people. Um, and there's also, uh, in, in, uh, at the moment, uh, an advertisement for a new editor or editors for Bookbird on the IBI website, as, very sadly, Janelle and Petrus's time in, as editors is coming to an end. An agreement between 
book bird and raising readers and maybe Russia to translate the special congress uh, issue on chil Russian children's literature into Russian was signed in 2019. This is the first time that book bird has appeared in Russian, but perhaps not the last. Um, it carries fascinating articles on children's books from Russia, ranging from the history and background of publishing for children, right up to current trends in publishing. It is illustrated in full colour, thanks to support and generosity from Raising Readers and Ibi Russia. And it is a significant contribution to the international study of children's literature. Evie and I are very disappointed not to be with you this weekend, but we leave you with the thought that at least something of the wonderful children's literature of this country has been captured in the pages of Bookbird. So if you haven't read Russian Bookbird, please make sure you have your copy. And finally, uh, thanks to, uh, to the International Youth Library and to Ibi for their permission to reproduce uh, the various images that were used uh, throughout this presentation. And thank you. Дорогие Эви, Эвел, спасибо вам огромное за такую содержательную, очень интересную информацию. Um, interesting speech uh, full of information and details. Now our colleagues know the history of the organization and I would like to repeat uh, Vell's uh, proposition to proposal to uh, send us new articles for our foreign uh, partners so that they know more about them. Uh, send them to me because I'm in close contact with the Book Bird magazine and thus we will represent and the Russian youth literature on the pages of this amazing magazine. Uh, sorry for exceeding our time limit, but please come to the I read ceremony on time.